Well guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad to see you guys back here again. Uh, I know it has been quite a while since I've last put out anything and for that I apologize. I've had a lot going on, some valid reasons, some not so much valid, but hey, we are back, so let's go. Now I've been meaning to create one of these videos for quite some time. Uh, in fact, I actually already recorded this back on December the 3rd, but during the edit of the video, uh, I ran into some technical issues that pretty much made the footage basically unusable. So in turn, I made some pretty significant changes uh, between video, between the, the location of where I'm recording. Um, so I think now is actually a really good time to, to go through uh, and see what my gear is. Now, as far as any updates to the video gear, that is going to be for the next video where I talk about a, a smaller kit that I have. Uh, but for now, we're going to be going through my main kit here, which is uh, here in my Shimoda Explorer 35 liter. This is the version two of the bag. And uh, we're going to have the opportunity to go through and see everything that, that I carry with me. Now, my kit does change depending on what I'm going to be shooting that day. Um, if I'm going to be doing landscape, I'm going to have a different kit than if I'm just going out and doing wildlife. Uh, my kit also changes depending on the location that I'm going to. There are plenty of places where I know, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to have the opportunity to use a long lens. I may not have the opportunity to use a very wide angle lens. So certain things I might leave home. Uh, but this is just going to give you a nice overall view of what my kit is. Um, as Especially since now that I'm taking this down to Florida, I have everything coming with me. Now, first things first, we're gonna start off here with my camera. This is the Panasonic Lumix G9. Now, as you guys may know from previous videos, I am a Micro Four Third shooter. Uh, and as such, this has been my workhorse. This is the camera that I take with me pretty much anywhere I go if I'm doing any type of landscape work, any type of wildlife work, and it, it's absolutely fantastic. Now, when it comes to landscape photography, I know a lot of other photographers out there are going to have something like the, uh, the Sony a7R5 or a, a Nikon Z8 or Canon R5, something with a lot, a lot of megapixels. This guy here has just 20, just 20 megapixels, but you know what? It does the job. It does the job. It's perfect for anything I'm going to be putting online. Um, but even for printing, this is more than sufficient. Now being micro four thirds, is it great in low light? It's okay. It's okay. It's not too bad. Um, obviously anything higher than maybe ISO 32, yeah, I'd say anything higher than ISO 6400. Now you're pushing it. Um, but as far as being able to handle that noise with things like Topaz Photo AI, or even now Lightroom's built in, um, noise tool, there's really no issue when it comes to removing the noise and uh, having a usable picture. Now attached to the camera, I have the Lumix 12 to 35 F2.8 version two of the lens. And for those unfamiliar with Micro Four Thirds, this is the equivalent to a 24 to 70. Micro Four Thirds is a two times crop factor. Uh, so any focal length that's on the lens, multiply it by two. Uh, and that's pretty much what the equivalent is. So again, 24 to 70, two eight. But this is the lens I have on there probably I don't know, about 70% of the time or so. Um, it is not my primary landscape lens, but it is still the workhorse lens. That it's, it's kind of the do it all, right? It's great for landscapes. It is great for portraits. I, I absolutely love this lens. And this is what I'm talking about though when it comes to micro four thirds, because like I said, this is like a 24 to 70. Consider the height of this. This is about, I don't know, maybe three inches or so. And it's just a little tiny guy on there. Front element here is just a, I believe it's a 58 millimeter thread. I have a step ring on here to bring it up to 67, but this is why I love Micro Four Thirds. It is just so small and so compact and so lightweight as well. Moving right along here, we'll talk about my primary f landscape lens. This guy right here, this is the Panasonic Leica 8 to 18 millimeter um, F2 to F4. Um, so again, in full frame equivalency, this is a 16 to 36 millimeter. And just as a testament to how tiny things are, this is a 16 to 35, essentially, this little tiny lens here. And I absolutely love this. It, it is incredibly sharp. It is great for those wide angle shots. If you want that grand landscape, um, especially if you're especially if you're going to be composing something that has all the elements that you really want, right? You have a nice foreground, midground, background. That's where this wide angle lens really shines. And I absolutely love it. 
Next, in the bag here, this is a lens. I'll be honest, it doesn't get used all that much. This is the Lumix 45 to 150. Uh, this is just essentially the Plastic Fantastic, although it is a metal body. It is a metal body, it's a metal mount, but it is still just a cheap lens. You can buy these used for about 100, 150 bucks on most websites like MPB, KEH. It's a good lens. It's a good lens. We'll, we'll, we'll put it at that. Is it great? No, it's not. Um, so again, this is the equivalent of a 90 to 300 millimeter. And the only reason I have not yet upgraded from this lens is because I don't really shoot much in this focal range. When I'm deciding on purchasing a lens, I like to go through my Lightroom catalog and I'll, I'll take a look at the images that I've taken throughout my entire career, just to kind of get an idea. Like, is this something that I'm really going to utilize? Is something like the, like, the, the upgrade to this would actually be something like the, the Lumix uh, 35 to 100 or a 70 to 200. Is that a lens that I shoot with? Now I've had my fair share of lenses in this focal range. Back in my DSLR days when I was shooting a crop sensor, I had a D200 and then a D7000. Uh, I had the 70 to 300 on both of those cameras. And I really wasn't utilizing this lens in that, in that range all that much. Um, anytime I used it, I was either shooting down towards the wide end around 70 millimeter, or I was shooting all the way zoomed in at, at 300 millimeters. Now, of course, on a crop sensor, that's 450 millimeters. So was I really utilizing it that much? Only at those, only at the, either the wide or the long part of it. Um, so because of that, I really don't feel a need to upgrade this. Now I do carry it just on the off chance. I do need something in the middle, but yeah, it's not, it's not really something that I use all that much. The reason for that is the next lens. This is the Panasonic 100 to 300 millimeter F4 to F5.6 uh, version two. This is my primary wildlife lens. I absolutely love this lens. Is it the sharpest lens? No. Are there sharper lenses out there? Yes, there is the Lumix. Um, actually, I believe it's the Panasonic Leica 100 to 400 millimeter. Um, there is also an Olympus 100 to 400 millimeters. There is also the Olympus 300 millimeter. Is it an F4? Yes, the F4. There's a lot of better lenses out there, but for the money, you really can't beat this. This brand new is, I think, like 500 something dollars. Um, and this is giving you a full full frame equivalency of two to 600 millimeters, which is, this is incredible, especially for such a compact size. But this is also why I don't often use the 45 to 150, because again, I'm shooting primarily at that longer focal range. So 100 to 300, 200 to 600. This is a very capable lens. I think a lot of people underestimate its capabilities. So if you shoot in micro four thirds and you're looking for a long lens, but kind of on a budget, I can't recommend this lens high enough. It is just wonderful. All right, so moving along here. Uh, let's see. Next, we'll talk about filters. You may have noticed on the front of some of my lenses here, uh, I have case lens caps, and that is because I do use case filters. Um, I don't use the case case, the case filter case. But as far as filters are concerned, I really only use three. Um, I have the case polarizer here. I have the three stop uh, ND filter and I have a six stop ND filter. And that, since that's all I use, I like using one of these cheapy little uh, small cases that you can pick up on Amazon for, for very little money. Now, as a side note, everything that I'm talking about today is going to be linked down in the description. They are affiliate links that you can use to make a purchase if you'd like. But because, but again, because I use only the three filters, the case that's included with the case filters, case case, is quite large. It's, it's quite a bit thicker, and I'm not really utilizing it. Next up here, we have, oh, well, this is the case for my DGI microphone. As you can see, I'm using it here. Got the other end connected to um, a camera across the room there. And yeah, anytime I'm recording any type of content, this is this is the microphone that I'm using. The DGI microphone system though, absolutely love it. Oh, uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Ah, okay. Here, let me just pull out a few things at once. Going down to Florida, I don't have any plans of recording any content for the channel down there, but there is a chance I might want to take some video just to record the trip. So one thing that I'm going to be taking with me is the DJI Action 3 action camera. 
I have it in a small rig cage just to give it some added protection. With that, I also am gonna be taking this set of filters here. I believe this is from Neewer. Uh, and we have a great set of filters. This is, I believe, let's see, this has a polarizer as well as ND filters from two to five stops. Two, three, yeah, two, three, four, and five stops. Um, there's a lot of brands out there selling filters, um, but these, these Neewers, I absolutely love them. And of course I have the battery case for the action camera as well. So I have a couple of extra batteries inside here. All right, what else do we have left in here? Uh, let's see, we got some batteries. I have this old think tank case here with a couple of spare batteries for the G9 inside. Uh, I like to keep my batteries labeled as well. Uh, I have on there the, the date that they were purchased. If I purchase more than one that day, I also am going to number them just to keep track of them because I do want to make sure that I'm rotating my batteries and making sure they're all getting used. For the most part, I will probably go through one at most two batteries in a day, but I always like to make sure I have some extras with me as well. Um, while I'm down in Florida, I'm going to be doing some sunrise shots, some sunsets as well. And just in case I need some light, I have a little headlamp. Uh, this is from um, Petzl. Next I have, this is the Peak Design Capture Clip. And it's attached to, I forgot what they call this. Um, Peak Design, yeah, I don't remember what it's called. Again, it's going to be linked down below. If you're using the capture clip on your hip, uh, this is a great way to lower it down a little bit further. Um, so that way your, your camera is not digging right into your side. Um, so camera slips down right into here and then this just slides right through a belt loop. Um, also one thing I, for, I forgot to mention on my camera is the L bracket. And I want to bring this up here because for one, when it came to the G9, when I purchased this, I really couldn't find any custom uh, plates for it, nothing specifically designed for the G9. But one thing I did come across was this plate from the three-legged thing. This is the three-legged thing uh, L or LE. Uh, this is the uh, the camera plate from them. And I absolutely love this because as you can see, the bottom of this plate here is a square. So what they've done is they've integrated Peak Design's capture clip system into their plate. So I have no problems just sliding this right on into my capture clip. And I can still also have an L bracket at the exact same time. All right, now I'm continuing on uh, through the top of the bag here. See what else we are carrying with me. Ah, yes. First, we have the extension pole for the DJI Action 3. Uh, what I also have in here, uh, I have some shower caps. Shower caps I find to be the most of course, the most budget friendly way of keeping your camera dry when it's raining out. Uh, when I'm walking around, I'll just sometimes have it just hanging from my hip or on my bag from the capture clip and I can just pop this right on over the camera. Keeps it nice and dry and you don't have to spend a lot of money on the, uh, the fancy um, other systems out there. Ah, and then lastly, because I am going down to Florida, I am gonna be on the Gulf side near beaches. I am gonna be hoping to photograph some birds. More specifically, some shorebirds. So I'd like to be able to get down nice and low with them. A lot of your wildlife photographers will carry something with them like the, um, oh, what is it called? Something, something ground pod. And it looks like, an, basically it looks like a frying pan that you set your, your camera in. And while that is a great option, especially if you're using a, a bit of a bigger kit, like if you're shooting with a, a Z9 and a 600 millimeter, yeah. You know, having that, having that ground pod can absolutely be great because you, you get a nice, more stable platform. For me, because I have a smaller kit and this is my, my biggest wildlife lens here, and because I'm also gonna be traveling through an airport and I don't wanna carry a frying pan with me, uh, I got this. This is the Platypod Max. Uh, so a nice, big, wide platform here that I can just put right down it onto the sand. I can just move around no problem whatsoever. Um, and this, <coughs> Uh, I just have tucked away here in the bag. But yeah, so that's the, the full kit that I carry around with me when uh, doing landscape work, wildlife work, things like that. Um, if I'm doing something like street photography, just general uh, travel, um, photo photographs of my family, things like that, I have an entirely separate uh, kit that I use for that, and that's going to be in the next video. So do stick around for that if you want to if you want to see my other kit as well. You know, I finished this video. I was done, I was getting set up for the next video and then I realized I forgot to talk about my tripod. So then I recorded the video talking about this tripod 
and I realized that I forgot to turn the autofocus on this camera. Now you might notice that this footage looks a little bit different from what you just saw. Um, and that is because again, I was set up, this is now the G9 recording me. And uh, yeah, I already have recorded, but I forgot to turn on the autofocus. So at no point was that, was that thing focusing on my face at all. So let's talk about this again. Now, if you've seen my video on tripod heads, you're already going to be familiar with this. Uh, for those who haven't, this is the Leo Photo. Uh, this is the LB60N. This is a leveling base. And then on top of that, I have the Sunway Photo DT40 uh, pan and tilt head. If you haven't seen the video, please go ahead and go watch it. I have it linked up here. Um, so this is the Benro FTA28CC Travel Angel carbon fiber tripod. And it's a good tripod. Um, is it the best one out there? No, probably not. But Benro does make some fantastic gear. I really do love this. Um, it does, it might have some shortcomings for some people. And the main reason is basically just a, a, an unintentional pun. Because the shortcomings is it is a little bit of a short tripod. Now for me, for reference, I am just a mere five foot six or this many centimeters for those who live in the, uh, the civilized part of the world and full fully open with the tr with the center column removed this puts my camera perfectly at eye level for me you know, this might not be enough of a, a tripod for you but definitely do your research when, when looking for tripods to make sure that you're getting something that's going to be tall enough for you without having to extend a center column but hey i want to thank you so much for stopping by for watching this video making it all the way through really do appreciate that if you do want to see more content related to this, I do hope on uh, actually getting some videos done is out in the field. Maybe I'm uh, doing some, some on the spot, some on location work. I'll be honest. It's a little bit more difficult for me because I don't live in an area where there's a lot of secluded areas. We have a lot of state parks and because of that we have a lot of people walking around and you know, like, like some other people like, you know, Thomas Eaton, for example, has, has made it really well known like him. I, I have a bit of an aversion with recording myself in front of other people, especially because I'm just launching this channel now and I don't have the greatest subscriber count. Um, so it's just kind of, I don't know, it's a little weird. So that's what makes it a little bit more difficult. And for that, I do apologize that yes, you haven't gotten a whole lot of content related to actual photography actually out in the field doing something. Um, but I have absolutely loved the opportunity to talk to you guys about the gear that I'm using. Um, and if you want to, if you want to see more of that content, please do consider subscribing to the channel. If that's too much though, I completely understand. But if you still enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below. And let me know what you're using. Um, are there any P are you a micro for third shooter and using anything that maybe I, maybe I should take a look at and consider. Uh, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. I read every single comment that comes through. It's easy for me to say right now because I don't get the, 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 the highest amount of comments. So it makes it quite easier for me. But yeah, that's going to be it for this week. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later.